So today we will make a short introduction to the last topic, which is the Fourier transform. This is a very, very useful uh, tool for studying PDs. And uh, it's it's a very huge uh, argument, but we have just one lecture. So we will say just something in the beginning of this. It will be surely useful for you in the, in the sequel of your studies. So we, we start with the following definition. So define. So uh, let uh, u be a function in L1 of the wall space and assume that, well, uh, maybe in this setting, uh, uh, functions are complex valued, okay? So uh, you have to think that maybe you can, can, be, can be complex valued. Then define, we, we, we set u hat psi, by definition, is the integral where n into the integral psi x u of x dx. So for any uh, psi into this copy of our n, uh, we compute this scalar product between, in the Euclidean sense, between uh, xi and x. Hmm? Then there is a complex exponential here, e to the minus xi x, so remember this minus. And then we integrate everything against u. By, this, is some nota this is a possible notation. Another possible notation is this. OK. I think that this is, yes, another possible notation. Um, remark. Uh, we have that e to the minus i xi x has, is a complex number with uh, norm 1. Uh, with norm 1, therefore, uh, this has norm equal to u of x, which by assumption is, is in L1. Therefore, the right-hand side converges, converges in the sense of Lebesgue. It's integrable. Hmm? So this is well defined. Uh, example. In, in, in dimension 1, this becomes uh, u hat of xi is simply a cosine of xi x u of x dx, because remember the usual e to the e. The usual formula. Uh, minus i integral over r sinus psi x u of x dx. Okay. This is just uh, so. In particular, if u is even, hmm? so if u is even. Uh, this, th then I am integrating something which is odd against something which is even, and therefore which is zero. We have u hat psi is equal just this. And if u is odd, well, uh, we, this vanishes, and what remains is just only that one. And of course, also, if u is even, then this is twice the integral of 
of this between 0 and plus infinity. Hmm? Okay? So if I want to integrate on the positive half line, then just multiply this by 2. Um, exercise in one dimension. Uh, take u, which is the characteristic function of the interval minus 1, 1. Hmm? Then it is clearly in an L1 function, and we want to compute u of xi, u hat of xi. And, well, uh, it is not difficult because u in that case is even. Therefore, we have that this is just the integral over R of uh, uh, cosine of psi x u of x dx. Well, now, uh, if, if psi is equal to 0, well, if psi is equal to 0, the computation is immediate. This is just only 2. Huh? This is, we know, is equal to, say, twice. Huh? Because we know that if it is even, then this is twice the integral on the positive half line. But on the positive half line, u is just 1 between 0 and 1, so and 0 else. So this just remains the integral of 1 between 0 and 1 of the cosine. And, uh, well, therefore, this is equal to, for, for c different from 0, 2 sinus of psi divided by psi. Huh? So it is 2 sinus if psi is different from 0. And so observe that always, a remark maybe, in general, if I compute u hat at 0, this is always the integral of u. which is, of course, accor in accordance with uh, this. Hmm? So at the end, you have has this expression. Hmm? And so we can, we can make from this, uh, this simple uh, calculation, we can make already some remark. some remark. So, u, it is of course with compact support. You see? But u hat has not compact support in this case. So, first remark is that u has compact support but u hat has not compact support. So from the point of view of supports, there is a striking difference between u and u hat in this case. Another remark that we can do is that u hat is continuous. It is clear. We know that the limit of uh, this as psi goes to 0 converges to 2. So this is a continuous function. While u hat, while u was discontinuous. Hmm? So again, there is a big difference in the regularity between uh, u and u hat in this case. 
Then another, another fact is that it is continuous, but it is infinitesimal at infinity. Limit of this xi goes to 0 is 0. xi goes to infinity is 0. Hmm? Uh, you have this continuous infinitesimal at infinity. Okay. Next exercise that I would like to leave you as homework, slightly more general than this, this exercise number one. So this is home in one dimension. Take u, take two real numbers, one less than the other and take u, the characteristic function of the interval a, b. So the previous case corresponds to a to equal minus 1 and b equal 1. Now we want to slightly generalize this result. OK? Then you have to compute uh, this. Well, still. Um, this is surely true and then we have something like 1 e, e to the minus cb with the, with the a maybe a and b something like this A and B. Okay? So try to do this at home. Other, so to comp it is very important in Fourier transform uh, make several exercises. So we will do a lot of this. Uh, mm u equal to to other exercise so the, the heavy side function e to the minus x well remember that the heavy side is 1 0 let's see hmm? ok so uh, u xi is what? Is the integral over r e to the minus i x c x. Uh, by the way, maybe in several books uh, there is a, a, co a coefficient in front of this integral. In this case, we, has, we have taken the coefficient equal to 1. It's just a matter of normalization. So it may happen that in, in some texts you find something like 2 pi to some power depending on the dimension. Okay? Doesn't matter. We take the constant equal one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, h of x between zero and plus infinity. Hmm? And and this is in, we are in one dimension, so this is simply xi time x minus x. So this is actually nothing but um, e to the minus x times 1 plus e xi dx. Okay? which is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus xi. Hmm? For an xi in R. In R. Hmm?
So as you can see, the, the, as we, we can see from all these examples, the, the output is a complex valued function. So in general, maybe it is better to think of u of the function u as, say, complex valued. Now, uh, try to do at home, home, compute the Fourier transform of, sorry, this is u of x, of v of x equal e to the x h of minus x. e to the x a of minus x and then using then using and you will see that this uh, the, the result will be the result will be 1 divided minus i x c for n x i in r and once we have done this exercise compute uh, this uh, the 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 Fourier transform of this uh, compute W hat xi W hat of xi and. Uh, Which is how how to compute this? Well, this is this plus or minus minus one to the uh, You are right. Thank you. The minus. Uh, also, oh, so uh, because here, this is uh, what is this? I mean, this is zero for positive. Uh, x and uh, minus 1 for positive um, for negative x so this is in L1 and then compute this yes remember that you must be in L1 always for the moment okay uh, other examples which are maybe um, Maybe which are so I was saying how to compute this with the minus. Well, you you can use the previous results because you can split this as uh, the sum of uh, of this of this. Huh? e to the minus x h of x plus e to the x h of minus x okay and so I mean it is now now you can see that you, if you take w hat of psi by definition, you have that this is the sum of the w hat of this plus is the sum of the hat of this plus the hat of this, and and so you have simply to sum up this at the end with this. Hmm? Okay. The value of W of hat, W hat, this e to the minus x. Yeah. Uh, what is the question? The, 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 the value of a function in L1 is not, is, it is irrelevant u is in L1, I mean, it, it is, irre it is irre irrelevant, the, 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 the definition of u at one point. Yeah, 
yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, so uh, there is, however, one much more interesting computation that exercise maybe we could try to do together. Or at least I would like to leave you as homework, but this is much, much more difficult than the previous exercises. So let us make some space. So the, the, the exercise is the following compute the Fourier transform of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. So u of x in one dimension. So n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1, and u of x is 1 divided by, which is of course in L1 of R. So now we have the following problem. So we have the following problem, which is the which is compute the following integral e to the minus i x i x divided by one plus x squared dx. Which is one of the well do you have do you know how to compute such a kind of integrals? So everybody knows? Is it so? Well, so uh, let me give you just for those that maybe that do not remember completely the details, let me give you some hint in order to, to make this computation. OK, first of all, well, this is even. OK, so u is even. And therefore, remember that uh, u hat implies that, say, u hat is also even. Hmm? Do you agree with this? If you remember the expression in one dimension of u hat, which was um, the integral over r of u x uh, cosine of psi x, this is clearly even with respect to psi. OK? So u is even. So uh, u hat is even. OK. So we can, we can suppose either psi positive or psi negative. Hmm? Okay, take for instance psi negative. This is the limit as r go to plus infinity of the integral over the um, the interval minus r r of e to the minus psi x divided squared dx. Okay, so so uh, our integral has is now the limit between minus r and r of that integrand. So now the idea, so observe that, uh, now the idea is to pass exactly to, to as he was saying, uh, to pass to um, complex numbers. Hmm? And so, and to compute this limit, uh, passing to the complex plane. So now that there is a remark here that if I pass to complex plane, so 
now if I consider, for instance, the function uh, 1 divided by 1 plus z square here, which is the, the extension of the function u to, to complex numbers, here there is a singularity. There are two, actually. But now, in particular, I am interested, so this is um, so I have two two poles, two poles of my function. at uh, minus i and i, OK? So now the idea is to, to do this. Say, now I want to, to compute the limit as this interval um, invades the wall line. But now let me do this. Take, say, for instance, uh, this half circle. Uh, and uh, for fixed R, uh, so let me call uh, this uh, part this part let me call the, say C R plus hmm? plus in the sense that it is in the positive part of the plane, like this. Okay, so the idea is now to add and subtract to this. So write this as the sum. Now I am using sort of standard notation, and then I, I explain now e to the minus. Minus the integral were the same quantity. Okay, so I add them, subtract. The, the, the integral of my function considered as a complex uh, with, with z in place of x. Of course, uh, my path here does not touch the pole. Hmm? And with this notation, sum of this uh, interval plus this half circle, I simply mean that I'm considering um, the um, uh, line integrals in, in the complex. I mean, this, this is a closed curve. So I simply integrate this on this loop oriented this way. And then I have to subtract what I have added before. Huh? This is, for any positive r, I can do this. There is no limit here in this procedure. R is fixed. Everything is converging for R fixed. This uh, path does not touch the singular point. So this can be done. Huh? The denominator is non-zero, and it's OK for the moment. Now, the, the, the problem is that I want to pass to the limit into this sum. And there are two points here. First, show that this goes to 0 as r goes to infinity. Huh? And, and I have taken psi negative. Huh? So minus psi is positive in this case with my choice. So the one point is to show that this goes to 0 as r goes to infinity. 
and go R goes to plus infinity. And then the other point is to compute what? I mean, this, there is a single, I mean, I have a closed loop. I'm integrating a function with one pole, just one pole inside the loop. So I know that this is the so-called residues. So there is a computation of a residues. The pole has multiplicity one. So it's not so difficult to compute the residues. Huh? So there are two theorems in the residues theorem, which show you that if you have a function which is not holomorphic inside this, it has a singularity, then you can compute. In this case, there is a pole of uh, multiplicity one. Um, then you can compute this in some standard way. Uh, the other problem is to show that this goes to zero. So this is a strategy to one strategy to to. And maybe it is better that I, I, I state you a lemma for such kind of integrals. Yes, maybe at least uh, once it is better that I state, state a lemma. So uh, let R be positive. Let omega be positive, and I want to integrate to I mean to to bound, and let uh, let me call it f be say continuous on CR plus. Huh? And uh, then I can e to the omega z f of z. Now uh, this integral is performed on CR plus z dz. So now, th th there is a plus here. Yeah? Okay. F is continuum, R is positive, of omega is positive. OK. Then there exists a constant. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, CR plus, so let me just uh, parameterize it. For instance, more generally than, than this. So uh, CR plus is the image of T into, say, rho of T to the I T, where rho where rho is piecewise C1, just to, to allow piecewise C1 instead of C1 is just to allow some, just some two or three or four corners. If I would like, if I, if, if I like to, to take another path, just to, so it's piecewise C1, but, but it is important that rho that does not vanish, it does not vanish. So the inf of rho <coughs> zero pi is positive. Huh? So I can parameterize, or maybe I should ch change sign symbol. This is for convenience, say just uh, half circle. Here is any curve also like this, something different from the circle. So t is in between 0 and pi. Rho is strictly positive. R, R is big, but positive and big and positive. This, is, this never vanishes so that uh, CR plus uh, does not touch, say, the origin. OK. 
Then there exists a constant. Let me denote it by uh, C star. C star. Just. C star is independent of independent of R, depending only on rho, but independent of R. Okay, such that this is less than or equal. Then I have uh, some C star here. Then I have maybe omega, and then the, the supremum of F. Supremum of F over the over the over the, uh, the, the part, over the, 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 the image of the curve, okay? So the idea is to apply this lemma. Now you see, I have taken omega positive, so I can, I can exactly apply that kind of lemma with the minus psi in place of omega. Hmm? Yes. Depends on R. Okay. But the, the interesting fact is that there is some homo homogeneity when you, you compute this there is a cancellation between R at the denominator and R at the denominator. And at the end, this C star is just something which depends on the infimum of rho, on the maximum of the derivative of uh, rho prime, and so on. But doesn't, does not depend on R. OK? So I was saying that what you, you could try in doing so the difficult one of the difficulties, of course, this is a difficult exercise, it is clear. Uh, so the, if you apply now taking omega equal minus xi, uh, so this is this is e to the e omega uh, z like this. F is one over one plus z square. And then you, you, you could try to, to see this. Well, this is one possibility. I mean, for, uh, one possibility to try to use such kind of lemmas. Maybe, maybe this can be done also in another way. Maybe this can be estimated separately. You don't need this. This is just to recall you that there is some sort of uh, of uh, uh, tool in order to treat such kind of integrals. Maybe you can do this directly. Doesn't? Okay. So this is you have to to show this and then try to, to compute this. Okay. This is one way. Maybe. 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 So if you are, or have already done the exercise, it's very good. Uh, this, this lemma is just to recall you that there is some tool to, uh, to estimate integrals similar to this. Uh, for, similar to this, if you want. It is clearly important that uh, if you restrict this 1 over 1 plus z square to the big circle, then this goes to 0. Hmm? You have to use this clearly. OK. Now, uh, let me introduce just one notation. 
notation. If u1 and u2 are two functions in L1, then let me introduce this u1x, u2y for almost every for almost everywhere x and almost every for almost every x and almost every y in Rn. Okay? And then I can try to compute the Fourier transform of this. So the exercise is to show you two to show this. And show this that this is just the product uh, of the two Fourier transforms. So, and this more generally holds uh, for n copies u1, u2, u3, and so on. This you can generalize it easily. Now, um, Corollary. Corollary of what we have seen. Exercises on uh, corollary of uh, u hat of 1 a b hat. And uh, the, the general case of this and, uh, and star. Check that uh, uh, if you is the characteristic function of a plurirectangle, R plurirectangle, huh? that is the product of um, characteristic functions of segments, of, of intervals, of intervals, okay, just the product. Huh? Then you have this infinitesimal. At infinity. Hmm? Because we know that if u is the characteristic function of one interval, then we have the explicit expression of u hat, which is infinitesimal. Remember, it's 1 divided i xi times e to the minus uh, i xi a minus e the minus ixcb. Huh? That is infinitesimal. And therefore, since when I have a product of characteristic functions of intervals, then I have that the, the, the Fourier transform of the product splits into the product of the Fourier transforms. Each of the, of the element of the product is infinitesimal, and therefore this is also infinitesimal. So now we are in a position to prove the following theorem. So let u be in L1, hmm? then u hat is in L infinity. Moreover, we have that u hat in L infinity is less than or equal than u in L1. Hmm? Hence, the operator, the linear operator f takes L1 in L infinity and is continuous.
moreover. So, you see, up to now, we have never said which was the uh, target space of F. Now, we see that, uh, <coughs> uh, that if this is true, surely the target space, the image of F, st stay inside this. And so, I can look at this operator for, uh, taking U here and U hat here. And, and since I have that uh, the, uh, the L infinity norm of the image is less than a constant one, the, one, the, the norm on the source space, by definition of linear operator, this becomes a bounded linear operator. Okay? Remember our theory on, bana on linear operator. Moreover, Moreover, u hat is continuous and infinitesimal at infinity. So the phenomenon that u hat is continuous is actually more general than the examples that we have seen. It is always true, at least when u is in L1. And also the phenomenon that it is infinitesimal is always true. Okay? Now, the difficult part of this theorem, there, is, there are some easy part, and the difficult part, the difficult part, I believe, is, is this one. In any case, let us see. Okay. Uh, the, the first part is immediate because remember, u high of psi is uh, by definition u hat of psi minus psi scalar product u of x dx. And therefore, this is less than or equal than than this, uh, which is the L1 norm hmm? for any psi. So for any psi, u hat of psi, the absolute, the, the norm of this vector is less than this, and therefore it, we immediately have hence. Since this is true for any psi, we immediately have the estimate u and 1. Okay? So the first part is just immediate from the definition. Okay? Uh, of course, it is crucial here that x is real. Huh? It's crucial that x and psi are real. Huh? This is. While u could be complex, but x and psi are real here. Uh, now, to show that u hat is continuous, also we can. So take a sequence psi n, psi uh, k, a sequence of points converging to psi. Uh, and then we have to show that, uh, to show that the integral, sorry, here is an n. Uh, we have to show that the integral of e to the minus i psi k x u of x dx converges to the integral over n 
e to the minus i psi x u of x dx. Hmm? And this is just an application of the uh, dominated convergence theorem because you have pointwise convergence of the integrands and each integral is bounded because this, is, this has norm 1 each integrand is bounded by a function which is integrable which is u okay so this is an immediate application of uh, Lebesgue th theory dominated convergence theorem so continuity of u hat is always true and therefore u hat is defined at all, at all point xi uh, and is continuous at all point xi Now what remains is the infinitesimal part and this one way to prove it is maybe to use density argument and what we have seen up to now namely characteristics of plurirectangle so um, fix uh, um, fix epsilon Uh, we know, or oh, maybe remark. So if u, if u is the characteristic function of a plurirectangle, then the statement is true. Therefore, u hat is infinitesimal. Not only this, but if u is a finite sum up to some index of uh, coefficients and uh, characteristic functions of Ri, finite sum, then still the statement, then you had is infinitesimal. Hmm? Now the idea is to, uh, as, to use the fact that this class of function is dense uh, in L1, and, and, and to use this assertion to prove, to prove that actually this is true for any u. So let epsilon positive fix epsilon positive. So and take w of this form. So we know that the set of function of this form is dense in L1. Uh, so we can take W of the form uh, 1 uh, of the form how do you call this function step uh, no step step functions uh, so finite linear combination of characteristic function of plurirectangles step I don't know. step in one dimension is of the form 1 which is close to u in L1 less than epsilon okay uh, so this is density of this class of function and then there is also the fact we have to use that uh, now w hat uh, now u hat of psi is of course u hat of psi minus w hat of xi plus w hat of xi okay hmm? therefore uh, u hat of xi is surely less than or equal than u hat of xi for any xi eh? uh, w hat of xi plus w hat of xi now this is surely less or equal less than or equal to the L infinity norm of this difference huh?
less than okay but we have already seen that this is bounded by by the L1 norm okay hmm? the previous estimate but this is small by uh, by assumption by this assumption by density assumption the, so this is less than epsilon plus w hat of psi well now it is sufficient to take r so take r so that w hat of psi is less than epsilon for any psi bigger than r so that for r sufficiently large uh, if psi has norm larger than r we have that this u hat is less than epsilon plus epsilon hmm? okay which gives you the final part so the, 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 the difficult part of this result actually is the fact that uh, the, the u hat is infinitesimal at infinity and for this our strategy was to to reason by density and to look at the Fourier transform of the characteristic of intervals okay Fine. Now I leave you to check the following list of results, very useful for computations. We have no time to prove them, but they are easy. So I write it as a theorem, yes, but they are actually they are not difficult. They are based maybe on some change of variables, sort of change of variables. Okay, so let, let me write down just the statements. I, I'm sorry I don't prove this, but I repeat, it's easy. So let u in L1 and y given in Rn and a, b, and n times n invertible, real invertible invertible matrix then the following statements hold one v of x equal the translation by y of u imply e to the minus i psi y u hat of psi so there is a sort of dual uh, translations at the level of the original function u transform at the level of the Fourier transforms as multiplication by this, uh, this kind of exponentials Plus, uh, yes, you're right. No, 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 it's okay. So U of, uh, V of X, now sort of dual statement, E 
x, y, u of x, then d hat of xi, I think it is this, eh? this sort of uh, transformation between translation and multiplication of exp complex exponentials. Then 3, v of x equal to u absolute value of the determinant of A, you had transposed of A times Xi. For V of X equal complex conjugate V hat of Xi equal uh, u hat of minus psi conjugate. Uh, other results. These are slight, these are, um, these are immediate, but maybe this not. Theorem. theorem. So let u in C1 new a unit vector. If u is in L1 and the partial derivative with respect to new directional derivative is also in L1. And I add this in order to be sure as x goes to plus infinity. Then This so in particular, if n is equal one in one dimension, in one dimension. I see that uh, if I want to transform, I, I need C1 just to be, to, to define pointwise this. Uh, if, uh, and, and I this also, that this is, I need that this is in L1 so that this is well defined. So you see that there is this transformation that there, uh, I pass from the derivative to multiplication by polynomial of degree one, multiplied by E. Uh, and then there is another theorem. These are useful to make computations. So theorem, let u in L1, new unit vector, define V of x as the scalar product of x nu times u of x. If v is in L1, then there is a sort of dual statement again, f of v.
d d over d nu. Uh, is equal to one. Then you hat minus i b hat xi. So in particular, in one dimension. In one dimension, the Fourier transform of the product of x times one, because nu is one, say u of x, u of x, and the Fourier transform of x times u multiplied by xi, uh, evaluated at xi, is equal to minus one over i minus 1 over i, u hat prime of xi. That is it, i, u hat prime of xi. So maybe it is more easy to understand, to remember this kind of formulas in one dimension. So let me just point out this So for instance, from this formula here, you see the following. If u is in L1, and this, this assumption is satisfied, and u prime is in L1, then this, the product of xi, xi times u hat is infinitesimal at infinity. So the most regular is your function u. Uh, Say, for instance, it has the f u in L1 and the first derivative in L1, say in the Sobolev space W11, then not only u hat is infinitesimal, but also u hat multiplied by a linear polynomial is infinitesimal. Hmm? And so on. Similarly, and dual in a sort of dual way, if u is in L1 and u multiplied by a linear polynomial is in L1, uh, then you see u hat is differentiable with this, with this uh, kind of statement. So there is a sort of relation between uh, differentiable properties of the functions and uh, uh, the fact that the, 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 tra the transform is infinitesimal at infinity. There is this sort of... Okay, now, exercise that maybe the last one Maybe I can leave you. Let me see if I can leave you. Ah, I, I give you this exercise as homework. Exercise. Let n be equal to 1 and u of x equal to e to the minus x square. Hmm? Write the 
ODE satisfied by you. What does it mean, this? More precisely, if you differentiate once, you find that u prime is equal to minus 2x u. Hmm? Do you agree? Okay. In this sense. Eh? Check that all assumptions in one of those theorems are satisfied so that so that you can uh, Fourier transform, check that you can Fourier transform, that you can Fourier transform. Um, so th what I mean is this, is this minus 2x u. Let me do this more generally. Fix a, a number, positive number t. So let me do a slightly more general exercise. Fix a positive number t. Huh? And consider this function. Now t is a parameter. Huh? And then you have, that, you have this differential equation here. Hmm? OK, check that you can Fourier transform all members of this you can Fourier, the left and Fourier transform the left-hand side, Fourier transform the right-hand side. Huh? You transform all members of all members of this P uh, ODE. Find the solution of the transformed equation. Okay. Now I have to to tell you something. It is not immediate to transform. Uh, well, how how we can can we transform this Fourier transform? Well, uh, we can we can start from the transformation of e to the minus x square. Uh, because uh, if not, uh, we can make a change of variable, say x over 2 square root of t, t is positive, and we can use some of the theorems that have now erased, uh, in particular those with uh, the matrix A. Matrix A was just multiplication in this case by, by 1 over square Matrix A is in one dimension, but more generally is just this. Huh? So if you so the, using some kind of this diagonal matrix, so you can compute the determinant and so on, you can use that formula to 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 try to 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 be able to 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 make the transform of this once you know the transform of this. OK? So you can use this. So you can reduce to the e to the minus x squared. OK. So and transforming this means that you have to integrate over r e to the minus i cx in one dimension e to the minus x squared dx. Hmm? And maybe here there is some sort of trick. So I have so I have to compute e to the minus i cx minus x squared dx. So let me look at this quantity 
as, as, it, as it, it was a sort of square, perfect square, it is not. So let me um, add them, subtract. Uh, so this is what I mean. What I'm missing here is uh, square, maybe add and subtract. Um, over four minus e xi x xi x minus x square. So now this uh, becomes maybe I have an I here. No, I haven't an I. Don't have an I. Okay. Is the solution square root pi degree n multiplied e to the minus x i quadrant of four? The solution of this you had? Huh? Yes. Yes, there is a square root of pi. I think that, well, the solution, I think, is something like in, in, uh, in one dimension. It is a constant. It is a constant. Maybe square root of pi. <laughs> e to the minus xi square over 4, I think. Xi squared out. I mean, it, we are real now, so it, uh, xi, squared, xi squared over 4. Maybe yes, maybe yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, okay. I leave you as an exercise to proceed to do such a kind of integrals. Um, Uh, so from this formula, you see that almost this function is almost a fixed point of f. I mean, up to this, this number here. This is e to the minus x squared, and this is almost e to the minus xi squared. There is just this divided by 4. So, uh, so this, uh, this, comp uh, this, uh, this uh, exponential here is almost sent into itself by the map f hmm? almost just up to some constant so uh, maybe i leave you to continue this exercise you should look at this kind of formulas and uh, uh, so uh, x i over 2 square minus maybe minus x square minus y x i. So this is equal to minus xi square over 4 minus this. So you, you can write this uh, integral. Integral over r, e to the minus i, sorry, e to the minus x plus i xi over 2 square dx. Okay. This is another of those integrals that can be done using complex analysis. Now I have no time to do this, but try to do by yourself to end up with this kind of, ex kind of exercise. Well, the story is very long. This is just the beginning. I'm sorry I cannot continue. Uh, but I let you know that this is extremely useful for partial differential equations in any case.